Hey guys, I'm Kim from Honey Trail Farm and I am standing in front of my tomato plot here in the garden. I have planted about 500 tomatoes out here uh, outdoors growing in landscape fabric and I also have like 80 some in a tunnel up in the front. So if you don't know this about me, I love tomatoes. And so I'm always searching for the best way to grow them. I've grown them in cages, I've grown them just by wooden stakes obviously when i had a lot less tomatoes and this year i am doing the florida weave so the florida weave is a method of trellising your what we call field tomatoes so your outdoor tomatoes that's more hands-off than um, staking each one individually which can work well if you're growing in a tight space and you really want to cram in the tomatoes um, growing them vertically and pruning them is a really good way or if you live in a really humid, really wet, um, hot summer, uh, pruning them a lot can help ward off diseases. Here in Indiana, we do have really hot, humid summers, but it's not quite like the South. So most people have only ever heard of growing their tomatoes and the standard three foot tall tomato cages that you can get at the store. And I will tell you that even my tomatoes right now they look small here in like three weeks they would have outgrown that tomato cage they would have got big and heavy and tipped over and flopped over the tomato cage by then and so tomatoes naturally want to grow along the ground so they naturally want to grow horizontally and then they'll send up the suckers um, that point towards the sky and set all the fruit but your fruit is only going to be so far off the ground which is not good if you want to eat your tomatoes because bugs are going to find them, little critters are going to bite holes in them. It just won't be a good situation. So I'm training them to grow how I want them to grow. This tomato was planted almost four weeks ago and it was this tall when it planted or when I planted it. It's growing well and I need to get this thing trellised because you guys were finally expecting some rain today. The first time it's rained in over a month. I'm crossing my fingers that it's a good amount of rain and not just a sprinkle. But I need to get the rest of my tomatoes trellised before the rain comes because this tomato really has no support. It is just here. Um, it's doing a really good job growing. You are. But you need some support because tomatoes are going to grow long and gangly and then flop over. And then with this rain, it will probably knock the plant over so I want to give it some support before the heavy rains come. So as far as field tomatoes go, I am not heavily pruning them at all. There is no way I can keep on top of 500 tomatoes heavily pruning them with everything else I have going on. So what I am going to do is you can see in this tomato right here, I've pruned the lower branches off. I will continue to do this up until about a foot up the plant just for some good airflow for the tomato plants. One of the main things that you need to think about with your outdoor tomatoes, especially when you're growing them um, closer together for production, you need to think about how you can create airflow within your plants because the lack of airflow, some stagnant air and moistures is like a death sentence for your tomato plants. Tomatoes that are touching each other, holding hands, um, getting way too close, they will not be happy for very long. You will start to see some yellowing of the leaves, the little brown spots on the plants. And that is your plant's first warning that it's starting to get diseased. Now tomatoes are pretty easily diseased anyway, like by the end of the season all my plants are going to have some form of yucky tomato disease, whether it's blight, early blight, late blight, mosaic something or rather, I don't know. But uh, tomatoes are easily diseased. But I like to try to keep them healthy for as long as possible because we have we don't have a short growing season but we don't have a super long growing season and i want to have as many tomatoes as i can possibly have uh, for canning purposes fresh eating i also uh, sell here and there so i want to keep my tomatoes healthy for as long as i can and by trimming off the lower leaves creating um, some space for some air to flow in, for the water to drain off of your plants um, is always a good idea. 
One reason that I'm growing in landscape fabric this year is that when rain comes or however you water, if you're overhead watering, um, it'll come and it'll splash on the soil. And a lot of the diseases that tomatoes get are soil borne diseases actually. So when the water splashes from the ground up onto the leaves, it projects those soil borne illnesses onto the bottom leaves of your plant, which is easily spread to the rest of your tomato plant. And it will slowly start to decline uh, after that. So by covering the ground underneath my tomato plant, uh, I'm preventing that splashback. You could also do this with straw, hay, any kind of organic mulch you can find. The reason why I am not using an organic mulch, um, such as or non-sprayed straw or hay, is because I cannot find any. This is the problem with um, uneducated farmers these days. They're spraying their grass crops. They're spraying their wheat crops. They're spraying. We're spraying too much. Um, so you do not want to put straw or hay that has been sprayed onto your ground because a lot of those broadleaf herbicides that they're spraying for will heavily affect your tomatoes, your peppers, lots of things in those families. And it doesn't just last one season. Once it gets into your soil, it can contaminate it for years to come. So you really want to make sure that you are very careful about what you are putting onto your garden. I still have a few plants left that I have not pruned the bottom leaves off yet. So before I go through and show you how to weave your plants using the Florida weave method, I will show you how I prune them first. I'm gonna take my snips and I'm gonna come up the plant and I'm going to cut off everything up until a certain point of the plant. I can safely cut all the way up to here. So now, instead of this, my new plant looks like this. And this is probably the bulk majority of the pruning that I'm going to do this year. I might come in a second time once the plant gets much larger and prune again the lower leaves, but I'm not gonna prune a whole lot of suckers. I'm not gonna prune um, just much more than that. If any leaves start to look yucky, I do take those off. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna leave these alone and see how they do. So now let's get to weaving your tomatoes. I have this box specifically called tomato twine just because it's really easy to handle, but you could also use like jute twine. I ideally would have something biodegradable so I could throw all in the compost pile and I wouldn't have to take all the strings out. But this is a synthetic string, so I will have to um, do that. So that's one thing to think about. I tied my twine to this pole. What I'm using for support for my Florida weave is five foot tall um, T-post. Now you'll see behind me once I get closer over there, we have been reusing T-posts that we already had here at the farm. So not all of them are five foot, but when we went to buy them, these were significantly cheaper. So that's why we bought them. If you have it in your budget or you don't have this many tomato plants, I would go with a taller T-post because once you put a five foot um, T-post in the ground, it really is a four foot T-post and your tomato plants will get huge out here. Like it's not uncommon to have a six to eight foot tomato plant. After you have tied your twine to the pole, you're literally just going to go down the row and weave in and out of your tomato plants. So I'm going to go behind the first one and in front of the second one. And I'm going to do that all the way down the row. So as I'm weaving, I try to hook my twine underneath a branch so that if one is kind of starting to flop over, I can pull it up straight because I will pull it really tight at the end uh, and tie it back to the same pole that I originally tied it on. Because I'm gonna go down one direction and there's another pole at the end and then I will come back down and weave the opposite way so that the strings are holding them close together, holding the tomato plant straight up and down. 
and my rows are 50 feet long and so I will have a tom I have a post here at the end and at the other end and one in the center and that's all the support that I need for th this amount of plants I'm going to take my twine. I went in front of this plant. I'm going to come behind this plant just like that. And then I'm going to keep going down the line all the way to the end. When I get down to the end, I will just tie the string off and then about once a week, I will come back and do the same thing. And so that makes trellising your tomatoes super simple, but you're not fussing with tomato cages that are just gonna fall over. Your plants are gonna outgrow them. This way, your trellising system can grow with your plants. But you can see looking down the row, that my tomato plants are nice and supported, they're nice and upright, and they're gonna be very happy this way. It also keeps the walkways nice and clear so that you and your equipment and whatever harvesting basket or wagon or whatever you're using will fit down the row. And you won't have to like step over tomato branches or get smacked in the face with one. So you can see the difference here in this first row that has been trellised everything is standing up straight it looks happy everything is nice and tidy and the tomatoes are supported so when the winds come or heavy rains want to push down your tomato plants they are not going anywhere i'm shaking on this thing and the whole line is nice and supported all the way down versus this row that hasn't been trellised yet everything's kind of flopped over to the side if I left this much longer, they would be touching the ground, picking up diseases, picking up bugs. It just wouldn't be a good situation. Plus, this rain that's going to come is probably going to come with winds because it does get pretty windy in my area. And so these tomato plants would really take a beating if I left them this way in a storm. The winds would push them down, blow them around, probably break some branches because my tomato plants are still very small now. By midway through the season, they could easily weigh with fruit on them, heavy, heavy plants, easily 50 pounds of plant. And so um, the winds and the rain can break the branches and you would not want to put in all this work and effort into growing your own tomato plants for them to be broken or busted in a storm. So I will keep updating you guys as the season goes on, how I like this, the pros and cons of the, t the Florida weave method. But as of right now, I'm really liking it. It's super simple. I have already trellised um, half of my tomatoes. I just need to do the other half today before the rain comes. But I wanted to show you guys exactly how I'm doing it and the reasons why um, this is the method that I chose this summer. But anyway. I've got to get back to it. I'm going to finish trellising all these tomatoes plus some more stuff that I got to get done before the rain comes. Fingers crossed the rain comes. Um, if you are in a place that's lacking water this summer, I really do feel for you. Um, but just keep watering, just keep feeding your plants, and we are going to have a great gardening season. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time.